see it on the display of the dash cam, but GPS is enabled. So the recording I'm now playing back for you to give an example, you can see my precise location in terms of GPS coordinates on them. Okay, so it's evening now and we're doing a recording just to show what the picture quality is like. What you're seeing at the moment is the 4K resolution. Hi guys, today we're unboxing and setting up a dash cam. So this particular one is from Xiaomi, it's a 70MAI. The model is A800 and this particular dash cam is a 4K dash cam. So there's an optional accessory which is a rear camera as well, which is 1080p. Now if you had just the front camera alone, then the picture quality can be 4K at maximum. But if you had both cameras running, then the front, the maximum you'd get is 2560 by 1600, and then obviously 1080p on this. So keep that in mind. If you just wanted 4K at the front, then use best just to buy one of the cameras. The viewing angle on the dash cam is 140 degrees, and it has a Sony IMX 415 CMOS image sensor. So let's take a very brief look around both the packages. So the dash cam itself comes in a very small package and looking down here, 4K Ultra HD video, built-in Wi-Fi and GPS, app enabled and rear camera optional. Coming around the side here, same details again. Looking underneath, a few additional details here and around the side, nothing too exciting, just the model number, etc. So let's have a look at the rear camera. Just a plain black box on this, nothing more on there. So let's open these two packages up and see what you get in there. Okay, so you know the routine. I've laid out everything you get in the packaging. So let me quickly go on through the items one by one. With the rear camera, you get a user manual, which is in Chinese and English. Looking at the rear camera, you get 5.4 meters of cable on here. So lots of cable. Cable quality feels good. Looking at the connector on the end, it's a specific connector for this. So it's not micro USB or anything like that. The dash cam itself, in terms of dimensions, it's five centimeters by 2.6 centimeters here. Cameras over here, it's adjustable just to show and there's a sticky pad underneath. Camera wise, the resolution on this camera is 1080p and general build of this feels good. Next, we'll look at the items for the front camera over here. We have the power adapter for the car and there's two connection points here. So I like the fact that it has got two, so you're not limited to just using it for the dash cam. You can connect another device to it. Coming over here just to show output is five volts, 2.4 amps and one amp on there. Build quality of this seems fine. Next, we have a tool to help with installing the cable. So this helps you to move some of the fixings in the car and push the cable in. So if you had a tight gap, you can just lift it out a little bit and push the cable in. All plastic in build quality and feels fine. Next, we have a plastic mounting plate here, sticker on the other side of this, and a spare sticker as well. We have a user manual, and this is multi-language. Next, we have a sticker to assist with installation, so you'd place this on your windscreen initially, and then the mounting bracket gets stuck directly on there. They've got an image of where it should be placed on. Next, we have the dash cam, so in terms of build quality on here, strong plastic, all black matte finish. You've got the camera over here, and that's adjustable. Nice, smooth action on here. Coming around this way, you can see the screen just underneath this screen protector. Got a power button at the side and four buttons here. Looking underneath, you've got an LED indicator, it looks like. And then over the top, you've got some vents. Looking over here, small hole there, mic. And then looking here, you've got the DC in, AV in, so that's for your rear camera and micro SD card slot. Let's take off the screen protector on here. And that reveals the screen behind there. Let's get this camera connected up so we can have a look around the menu options. So I've got a micro SD card here. This is 64 gig in size. That just slots straight into the gap here. Push it in. That's it, that's in. Next, we've got to plug in the DC power. So I've actually plugged the cable into a power bank just for testing purposes. And then we get that connected there. And then finally, the rear camera. That can be connected onto the point there. Dash cam's powered up now for the first time and we've got system language selection. So it's on English at the moment and the indicators at the bottom tells you what the buttons do. So that's up, down and confirm. So we'll just confirm this one. Welcomes you now. Backup camera is connected. And confirmed the rear camera is connected. 
next to that. So it's the indicator light, which is just down here. So green indicates it's recording, blue is transmission mode, and error is red. And in terms of brightness levels, looks good and easily noticeable. Next to that, then we've got time zones. So let me change that. London, next to this. Date and time selections. So let me change that now. Next to this. Parking surveillance, if parking surveillance mode is enabled, a video will be recorded automatically if a collision occurs while the vehicle is parked. We'll disable this for now. Now it's saying thanks for use of 70MAI dash cam A800. Scan the QR code, download and install the 70MAI app for photos and videos. We'll just click next to that. And that's it, simple as that to get up and running with this dash cam. Looking over here, option there, if I click on that, it switches to the rear camera and again switches back clicking over here there you go emergency video recording recording complete clicking over here entering the gallery will stop video recording continue to that and you can see the different videos being recorded so front camera video if i click on that you can see the videos recorded there going back from there backup camera video again the back camera emergency videos there what i've just recorded now and parking videos so it's nice it actually splits them up into different categories so you're not going through a load of footage trying to find the correct one coming back from here and then clicking on settings over here you've got video settings looking in there emergency video on high sensitivity if i click on that you can go in there and there are the different options available coming back from there Parking surveillance, obviously we did disable it, but then going in there, that's what you have available on high sensitivity, on low sensitivity and disable. Back from there, recording duration. So if I go on there, the one minute, two minute, three minute on there, coming back from there, down from here, video coding. So high compression ratio. So the higher the compression ratio, the less space it will take up on the memory card. So best to just have that selected coming back from here video resolution two cameras are connected on this hence why the lower resolution for the front camera if i go in there you can lower it to 1080p as well if you wanted to coming back then you've got video format so 60 hertz ntse going in there we can adjust that to pal so 50 hertz or 55 hertz coming back from there going down speed latitude enabled now coming back from there Go on to the next one, system settings. Wi-Fi hotspots, now that's used with the app for the dash cam, but that isn't currently compatible. So that will be coming in the future. But at the moment, obviously this is quite an early review. Power on Wi-Fi, that's disabled. And recording is disabled as well. Coming in there, you can enable that. Coming down from there, ADAS, and that stands for Advanced Driving Assistance System. Now, on a previous version of this, it was a separate module, but now it's actually built on. So it's a better way of doing things rather than plugging in adapters. They should put all the functionality on, which they have with this one. Next, we've got screen off time, and at the moment, it's set to always on, and this is where the screen times out, and it just appears as black. I think it's good just to leave it on so you know it's working in the background. Speaker volume. So this is the sound levels you're hearing from this. You can turn that down. Coming on there, you can disable the sounds as well. Coming down from there. Turned off automatically in parking. So that's currently set to 10 minutes. Going in there, you can see you've got five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And then down below, do not turn off automatically. That means it will just continue recording when the car's parked. Coming back, then you've got system time. Then you've got language, time zone, you can change and GPS status prompt. So going in there, you can disable or enable the prompt. So if it's disabled, it's just running by default. Back from here, format SD card, so you can format it, always worth doing initially. Coming back into settings, factory reset, so you can reset it back to factory defaults. Coming along, download app, obviously I've already mentioned that's not available yet. System update, firmware update can be done to the system from there. And finally about just gives you current version and the time it was published. Back from here, back again, and that's it. Simple as that, and a nice amount of options in there. Next, if I disconnect the rear camera. Backup camera is disconnected. And it's now saying you can up the resolution to 4K. Next, just to show what happens if you enable the ADAS function on here. So if I 
click the confirm for it goes on to move the position of the recorder to ensure the front of the vehicle is aligned with the bright okay next step to that turn the lens to ensure that the distance horizon is within the highlighted area carry out calibration starts please keep your speed at 20 kilometers per hour or higher so it actually tries to keep a track of you actually being in a lane so that's one of the options for ensuring safety now if i go back into the settings for this you can see what's available so adas warning page going in there car ahead move so these are the warnings you'll get lane departure forward collision and that's the three there coming back from the adas display marking scenes after enabling marking a scene cars and lane markings within the recognition range can be marked on the main interface in real time turn that on calibration option again and that's it now in terms of installing the dash cam first thing we need to do is install the plastic film here on the windscreen of the car now position it correctly so you can see enough of the outside so i'm thinking i've got a rear view mirror here and just below that would be probably the optimal position i did have a check by just placing it in position higher up either side and i was seeing a little bit of the side here and the side there so i think the best place probably is just down below and just showing how it would be so it's not too bad and even reaching the cables will be better because it will just come along along the side there so with the film if i take the plastic bit off and it's this part here that sticks on so we'll place it in position place it in position like so now taking the dash cam just take the plastic cover off the back there and just place it in position and there you go you can see for yourself easy to take out and place back into position very simple to install the rear camera obviously find your position and then it's just a matter of sticking it on dash cams installed now and just to show cables running all the way into this trim and if i show there goes along some trim over here so i've got it going along the top rim there all the way around to the back to the rear camera you can just see in the corner there so we're ready to test this out now Okay, so the calibration is completed now and it's now monitoring lane discipline and obviously collision detection as well. So it just adds that extra bit of security. Now, the recording you're seeing at the moment, it's in 4K. There's no rear recording going on at this moment in time. And it also gives the ability to record the micro from a microphone built in to the device. see it on the display of the dash cam but GPS is enabled so the recording I'm now playing back for you to give an example you can see my precise location in terms of GPS coordinates on them it's quite interesting functionality on there the fact it can locate exactly where you are and obviously record that as part of the footage so you have proof of date, time and location.
give you an idea what to expect in terms of front and rear picture quality on here. So now we've got the rear camera connected up to the system. This will give you an idea of the picture quality to expect from both front and rear. Obviously the front now has reduced picture quality. It's not in 4K, just a note. Motion detected for the vehicle ahead. Motion detected for the vehicle ahead. There you go, motion detected from the vehicle ahead. So again, just an added bit of security as you're driving along just makes your car that bit smarter really and it's nice that option is configurable as well the fact that if it does get irritated it keeps warning you you can just mute it you don't need to have it enabled and if you wanted that added bit of security just enable it again simple as that Okay, so it's evening now and we're doing a recording just to show what the picture quality is like. What you're seeing at the moment is the 4K resolution. And you can see for yourself, clarity wise, it's very good. Okay, so the footage you're seeing now, I've actually connected the rear camera up, so you're seeing the quality to expect with the reduced resolution on the front camera and 1080p on the back camera. Hopefully it will give you an idea of what it's like in the evening as you're driving along. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this 4K dash cam from Xiaomi. Excellent picture quality on here, both front and rear. Keep in mind, 4K is only available if you're running the dash cam in front camera mode only. If you had both, you're gonna get a reduction in picture quality on the front camera. This is actually part of an Indigo funding campaign from Xiaomi. They've got quite a few backers at the moment, and in terms of price, I think it works out really good. So if you wanted to buy just the front camera standalone, you can pick it up for $100, or if you wanted both the front and the rear, there's a super early deal where you can pick it up for $119. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Hang around for the end cards, I'll have some playlists with more dash cams in there and some cool tech. If you've liked this video, hit the thumbs up and let me know if you like this product. If you haven't liked it, Drop me a comment, let me know why you haven't liked it. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.